So this is a nasal endoscopy of a patient who's middle-aged male patient. And as you can see, this is a mask ventilation with a hole, a port for the opening, uh, which from which I can introduce my endoscope for the nasal endoscopy. The reason I'm doing so is that this patient has uh, severe issues with the maintenance of SpO2. The patient's SpO2 saturation was roughly around 80, 85 and not going beyond that. So this is a patient's right nasal cavity. You can see a small spot of blood over the anterior most aspect of the nasal septum and a lot of muc uh, crusting on the superior aspect. And I'm trying to go inside to visualize the patient's right nasal cavity. You can see a small spot of blood on the patient's middle turbinate, which was already present, most likely because of the previous introduction of the nasal swab for the COVID-19 test. So as you can see, the patient is fully conscious, awake, oriented to time, place, and person. And I'm using the mask ventilation and I'm using a small port to introduce my nasal endoscope. So the patient gets a lot of uh, good oxygenation. The patient is on 10 to 12 liters of oxygen going on continuously to maintain the saturation. The moment the mask was removed, the patient's saturation would go fall below 70, around 70, 75, which is not good for the patient. So as I'm trying to go inside, you can see a lot of slimy mucoid secretion. I'm trying to focus on the area of the skull base and the cribriform area. So far, it looks normal. If I try to go behind, you would start seeing something yellowish, pale mucosa right there, which represents the, the olfactory epithelium. The area looks clear. There's no polypoidal or any crusting or secretions over there. So this area looks okay. So that you can see that's the axilla down there, and that's the stalk of the middle turbinate. So this is the patient's right nasal cavity and you can see some yellowish white debris secretions on the middle turbinate and if I go near that focus on it so probably on the first impression it just looks like a thick yellowish white mucoid secretion scab or you can say some minimal crusting on that but you always need to go and check it uh, you need to focus your endoscope properly now, as the patient is awake and conscious, he's going to breathe from the nose. You ask the patient to breathe from the mouth so that the nasal endoscope does not get fogged up repeatedly. Okay. So as you can see, it appears to be as a yellowish white scab with a lot of whitish granules on the surface. And there's a lot of mucoid strings over there. And this area somewhat looks blackish yellow. But then on close observation, we can see some cottonoid appearance mostly like fungus mostly like the candida fungus the the white fungus which we see normally in the ears on the surface of any mucous membrane or the oral cavity so if on on closer observation you always need to have a, a close-up look so the trouble i'm having right now is that the, the endoscope is getting fogged a lot so make sure you use savlon for decongestion so as you can see, it appears to be as fungal growth, but appears to be as cottonoid fungal growth on the, the, la, the medial aspect of the middle turbidity. Yep. So that is definitely fungus. And that is a surface fungus for sure. So far, we can see that it's a cottonoid appearance of the, the fungal element on the middle turbinate, But we cannot conclude that, that this could be mucormycosis. So what you can do, you can take a nasal swab or you can just take a small forcep and you can just scoop this area and try to remove whatever part of the fungus you can see right there and send that sample for the KOH and the culture and wait for the report. If it's showing uh, normal candida, nothing to be done. Nasal irrigation is the treatment of choice. Uh, if it is showing aspergillus, you have to take steps. You have to go for the MRI. So this is the patient's left nasal cavity and the left middle turbinate is also showing a lot of area of bleed, probably because of the introduction of the nasal swab before. You can see an accessory ostium up there. So this left nasal cavity appears to be as normal looking, does not look any, uh, no, no crusting, no blackish uh, secretions or any kind of thick colored secretions, Norm looks normal as such. No discoloration as well except for the fact that when we go posteriorly you can see one more ostia behind and you can see a lot of 
yellowish white mucosal secretions over there probably some kind of infected sinusitis but this patient does not give any history of previous sinusitis or any any complaints whatsoever so this patient uh, did not give any history of typical signs and symptoms of mucor so what exactly is the history of this patient is that this patient is a middle-aged male patient having a history of severe COVID infection for which hospitalization was done for 15 days. High dose steroids were given, uh, high dose antivirals were given, high dose antibiotics were given. The patient currently is still on high dose of steroids because of the severe lung, uh, you know, fibrosis, edema. So as you can see, this is the patient's right nasal cavity. And as I'm trying to go inside the right middle meatus, you can see a lot of thick yellowish green mucoid pus type secretions lodged within the middle meatus. And that's the bulla et modalis superiorly, you can see in the center. That's the uncinate process laterally. And that's the middle turbinate medially. So you can see something slimy on the uncinate process as well indicating that this patient is definitely having a severe form of sinusitis and there's a lot of posterior collection of the mucoid secretions. So still does not signify that this could be a mucor infection, but definitely it suggests that there is some kind of infection happening inside the right nasal cavity. Uh, the patient did not have any symptoms of facial heaviness, numbness, or any sort of eye ophthalmic changes or any headache. Nothing. The patient is currently admitted in the hospital for lung treatment because of severe edema, low saturation or around 80. So that's the only complaint the patient is having right now. The patient wanted to get uh, his nasal endoscopy done to rule out any case of mucormycosis or any invasive fungal sinusitis. So what you can do in such cases, you can just start the patient on observation or you can start the patient on nasal irrigation. Now, this is the patient's left side, which we already saw. It's completely normal. Uh, the right side, however, had some thick collection. That's This is the left side, except for the small part in the left posterior middle meatus area. Everything looks to be fine. So this patient, uh, the warning signs in mucormycosis, no, Previous cases of mucormycosis and aspergillosis patients which are on whom I have operated also had the same nasal endoscopy findings and that turned out to be mucormycosis on histopath and, uh, and microbiological testing. But the patient also had the same findings for which this patient is having right now. But the, the only thing, the only different thing in this patient right now is that the patient is not having a single symptom in relation to sinusitis or any mucor infection. So when I check the patient's oral cavity, you can see when I'm trying to visualize the patient's oral cavity and when the patient is conscious oriented, you need to ask the patient now to breathe from the nasal cavity and vice versa for the nasal endoscopy. So as you can see, there's a lot of fogging happening because the patient is trying to exhale the air from the oral cavity. So now it's much more clear. So as you can see, the patient is having a lot of bad oral hygiene and the entire oral cavity mucosa is uh, covered with diffuse whitish membrane, suggestive of high level of oral candidal infection. So you can also see there's a lot of congestion in the posterior uh, pharyngeal wall, the tonsillar pillars, the slight edema on the uvula region as well. And you can see a lot of collection of whitish and yellowish debris suggestive of typical oral fungal infection. So you can you can just take a swab uh, a swab from the oral mucosa and send for culture to rule out the candidal infection. You can start the patient on oral candidal mouth paint and good oral hygiene. Uh, so this is the patient's right nasal cavity again. Now the patient is conscious, so he's gonna breathe from the nose. Ask him to breathe from the mouth. Now, what I'm doing right now here is I'm taking a small cut superiorly and inferiorly, both horizontal in nature, to see for a small biopsy. As soon as I make the cut, you can see there's a lot of capillary ooze happening, suggesting that uh, the blood supply to the mucosa is very much intact. Because in cases of mucormycosis, 
the blood supply is really hampered the the, the mucosa becomes pale there is uh, obliterative uh, ischemic changes there is necrosis and hence there is a lack of blood supply but in this case there's the blood supply is pretty much good to me and you can just do hemostasis or you can just send a, a, a small piece of the mucosa for biopsy just to rule out any invasion uh, of the fungus. So just keep on doing the hemostasis for the patient. Maintain the hemostasis. So in general, the left nasal cavity looks to be normal. The right looks to be normal except for the fact that the middle meatus is completely full of thick yellowish white mucoid purulent structures uh, which could suggest a sinusitis. So still we cannot rule out that this patient does not have mucor, okay? However, the signs and symptoms do not match with the mucor, but these findings can be present in a case of mucor mycosis. So the confirmed diagnosis is only with clinical history combined with nasal endoscopy, combined with MRI, PNS with orbit, and SOS MRI brain. And then if the MRI suggests that there is invasion, inflammation uh, surrounding perisinus inflammation, invasion, it could be fungal. Then we have to go in for a biopsy, a detailed biopsy, and then the culture and QOH mount along with the histopath are the most confirmed methods to diagnose that this could be a case of mucor and aspergillosis. So this is basically how you should be doing a diagnostic nasal endoscopy for a patient. Who wants to get rid of any suspicious uh, suspicion of having mucor infection? So I'm gonna go and observe the patient for any warning signs, which could be any ophthalmic signs, redness, proptosis, uh, ophthalmoplasia, weakness in the eye movements, or bulge in the eyeball, chemosis, or severe headache, uh, loss of vision, blurring of vision, um, then facial numbness, facial swelling hard palatal uh, hard palate discoloration numbness in the upper oral cavity then uh, facial swelling nasal discharge which is foul smelling all these are warning signs for you know the the mucor infection sometimes patients present with facial palsy the most common nerve palsy is the maxillary nerve the v2 branch on the cheek so this is how you should be doing it